Hello viewers, welcome to my channel IITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought another interesting problem for all of you. This from alternating current and uh, this problem is also there in one of my sheets that I discuss almost every year and students find uh, this problem to be difficult. So that's why I decided to do a video for all of you. So knowledge shared is knowledge multiplied. So let's see, let's have a look at the problem. So here's the problem. Uh, okay. I have an LCR circuit, a parallel circuit as you can see and uh, I want the value of R1 and R2 so that the circuit is resonant at all frequencies. So what do we mean by resonance? In the context of JE we always mean that resonance means that generator current and generator voltage are in same phase, right? So let me formally read out the question. Find the values of R1 and R2 if the network shown in the figure is to be resonant at all frequencies. So all of us have seen networks which are series networks, they are resonant at 1 by root LC and similarly we find resonance frequency of so many circuits but here is a special circuit which you want to be resonant at all frequencies. So if you want you can give it a try, I will get into my analysis right away. I will be using the complex number approach here. So by resonance we mean that the current and voltage should be in same phase which means that the impedance should be completely real. If we are going by the complex number analysis then impedance has to be real. right? Because if uh, impedance is complex then obviously complex number has some magnitude and some phase angle associated. And if there is any phase angle then obviously voltage and uh, current will not be in same phase. right? Because uh, complex current is complex voltage divided by complex impedance, right? So impedance has to be real if we want uh, zero phase difference, okay? So complex part should be zero. So now uh, let's look at the complex impedance of this uh, branch. So all of uh, uh, you might be aware that an inductance has got complex impedance given by J omega L where J represents iota and omega L is uh, obvious, okay? So Z1 of the top branch is simply R1 plus J omega L. There are two impedances in series. So J omega L for this and R1 as it is, okay. And similarly Z2 that is uh, impedance for branch 2 that will be equal to what? R2 minus J by omega C. So capacitor has got impedance of 1 by omega C and if you write in complex number form it is minus J by omega C or 1 upon J omega C, right. And now since the impedances are in parallel you take the reciprocals and add, okay. So for parallel circuits 1 by Z complex is 1 by Z1 complex plus 1 by Z2 complex. So 1 by R1 plus J omega L plus if you take this omega C R2 minus J upon omega C right and its reciprocal becomes omega C divided by omega C R2 that is this and minus J okay. And now I want that uh, the complex part of this expression must be 0. So what you can do for simplifying I am not interested in getting the entire expression but only the co coefficient of J. That, that is coefficient of iota I want. I am not interested in the real part. So I will just calculate that. So what you can imagine is you can try a rationalizing kind of thing that you do. You multiply this by R1 minus J omega L on the top and R1 minus J omega L at the bottom so that denominator will become R1 square plus omega square L square, right? Remember that minus J square is nothing but plus 1, right? J square is minus 1. And uh, then complex coefficient since uh, you got minus j omega l into 1. So, uh, so coefficient of j becomes minus omega l over here, right? So I hope you understood this part, okay? Similarly for this, what do you do? You multiply top and bottom by R2 omega c plus j and R2 omega c plus j. So denominator simply becomes R2 square omega square c square plus 1 and the numerator is omega c. Uh, the coefficient of j in the numerator is uh, omega c, right? Because uh, you are going to multiply it by what? Uh, R2 omega c and plus j. So this j will get multiplied by this omega c. So for coefficient of j, you will just get omega c in the numerator, okay? So I hope you got this much. And now uh, I can just rearrange this equation. Uh, 1 omega you can cancel and then L into this uh, cross multiplication should be equal to C into this cross multiplication. That's what I've written. And again, I've rearranged this equation. So you rearrange this equation, what do you get? L minus R1 square C. Uh, C, you'll get L into 1. So L and C into R1 square you take there. And the omega square terms you take to the RHS. So L minus R1 square C should be equal to omega square LC into L minus R2 square C. Just rearrangement of equation 5. And 
since you want the this whole thing to be independent of omega the only way that is possible is the, if the coefficient of omega becomes zero so that means what l minus r2 square c must be zero so equation 6 is to be valid irrespective of omega therefore coefficient of omega must be zero so l minus r2 square c is zero that gives you r2 is equal to under root of l by c okay and now if rhs of this is zero lhs must also be zero right so l minus r1 square c must also be zero so that gives you r1 is equal to under root l by c so that was my analysis of the problem i hope you enjoyed the analysis and uh, if you did enjoy the analysis please do give a thumbs up to my video and share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you use for networking with your fellow students who are preparing for je or olympiads and most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my channel you know what to do please hit that subscribe button because that's what keeps me motivated to do new videos for all of you frequently and thank you very much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you